Over the years that we've been on social media with our builds, we've been asked a ton of questions about uh, just about everything. So we decided to ask our followers and our YouTube uh, viewers uh, some what their specific questions are, and uh, that's what this video is all about, a Q&A. So first up, Meg on Facebook asks, having never done big projects like your camper and revamping your trucks, did you just buy how-to books, talk to experts via online groups, or rely on the aftermarket manufacturer support organizations, or all of the above? All of the above. Yeah, we spent a lot of time before we even turned our first wrench on our FJ. We did a ton of research and we went on all the message boards, Facebook groups, uh, websites and everything. And what we did, we, before we asked questions, we searched through the, the threads. And usually, more times than not, we found the answer to our questions by doing that. Instead of just asking the same question over and over again, like, what lift should I buy? Or how big a tires can I fit on this thing? Uh, we searched that first, but then we asked a million questions and people were so cool about answering uh, answering them that that's how we learned how to do things and we went on mess on the manufacturers websites and researched the products we asked people who bought the products what their opinion and what their experiences were with them and yeah we uh, we based our own purchases on, on that more or less and don't sell yourself short. Mark's a bit of a guru. He used to have a, little, a race car when we first met. You almost said little race car. <laughs> it wasn't a little race car, believe me. It, it emptied my wallet quite, quite easily. Uh, he built wooden canoes. Uh, he does a lot of projects around the house, so he's, he's not a newbie. I'm a newbie. But he's I'm, I'm a newbie at the four-wheeling thing, definitely. Blake asks, what are your likes and dislikes of your rear bumper? I haven't decided on one yet or exactly what I want. Well, we have the CBI off-road dual swing out. And I, I saw it in person out at the FJ Summit last year. And uh, I knew that that was what we wanted because the hinge point on it where, they, where the things swing out, where they anchor to the, to the uh, bumper, is absolutely rock solid. It's the most solid mount I've ever seen on any uh, swing outs uh, so that was one thing and it's really nice now we can get our spare tire out from underneath and on back that way we can have uh, well with the 285s 285 70 17s the it sticks down quite a bit when it's mounted when the spare is mounted underneath there so we were able to get that out of there put it on the back uh, with the dual swing outs we're able to carry a spare gas can and our water on the back. Um, the pros, well that's the pros. The cons, um, the tire, the spare tire does shake a little bit on some road surfaces, but uh, yeah, it shakes a little bit going down the interstate. Uh, and you have to swing it open to get to the Yeah, hatch, when you so. have to open the hatch, you have to swing both of them out. But you get used to that, really. You, you get to be able to do it in a second or two so that's no big deal. Dave asks did you do a video on the FJ wheels and tires? Curious as to what brand and size you went with and do you have wheel spacers? Uh, we didn't do a specific video on it. I think we included it in our suspension when we put the Toy Tech suspension on there. Uh, we went with Cooper, what are they, STT Pros or SST Pros? STT Pros? STT Pros in a 295-7017. Uh, they're, a, in my opinion, one of the best mud tires available. Um, they're nice and quiet, surprisingly quiet on the road. They're not, you know, I mean, they do make some noise, so don't, don't expect them to be whisper quiet. But they're a lot more quiet than other mud trains. Um, they do, in... In packed snow and ice, they're not real good. So if you plan on a daily driver up in the northern climates where you get ice and snow, like we do in northern Illinois, um, they're not the best. I mean, it's you get used to it. But uh, anyways, I've, we've got uh, Pro Comp steel wheels on it, nine inches wide. Uh, they 
And the thing is with them, it's the stamped steel, like the old school. I want to go with the old school look with the, with the round cutouts in it. And it's got the same offset as the stock wheels, but because the di how the dish is formed, it comes in contact with the calipers in the front. So we do have to run inch and a quarter spider tracks. Yes. Spider track spacers, which I've, we, we haven't had any trouble with the spacer. We do get a little bit of bump steer because of them, I think. Uh, we, they haven't been wearing out our bearings or anything like that. I, I would rather not run spacers, but with those wheels, we do. Next, we have two questions that are similar. So um, Juan Pablo asks, what equipment and software do you use to create and edit your videos? And Tim and Michelle say, would love to see how you plan, shoot, and edit a video. So let's go into that. Let's talk about that. Okay. Um, software is, I use Sony Vegas. I've been using that for over 10 years. We had a, a small videography business uh, before we went into the overlanding thing. Um, canoeing and kayaking, we produced all sorts of guidebooks, video guidebooks, uh, gear reviews, infomercials, all kinds of stuff. So I've been using that for a long time. I'm really used to it. Um, I would hate to relearn uh, another platform. But uh, And for cameras, we don't have anything really fancy. We have a, a really nice Canon, which uh, here's a picture of it. Uh, once in a while, we'll throw in our uh, Nikon. Um, the, one of the biggest, or one of the most important pieces of equipment for shooting video is microphones, believe it or not. Micro, uh, audio is even more important than the video that you shoot. Um, people will walk away from a, a nice video if it has bad audio. They'll watch a bad, wait, did I say that right? They'll, they'll They'll stay tuned to a bad video as long as it has good audio, but they'll walk away from a good video if it has bad audio. Okay, that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. It didn't make sense to me, but as long as, okay. Uh, what, what else? The do? other things, um, always use a tripod. My gosh, have you ever seen those videos where people take with their phone the or whatever and they're shaking? Yeah. Oh, it makes me sick. I can't watch. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, avoid, especially if it's not on a tripod, never zoom in because once you start zooming in then it gets really shaky even if you're you think you're holding it perfectly still it'll still shake um there's so, there's image stabilizers in a, most of the new cameras which works to a degree but don't trust it uh yeah the but the the uh microphones get cameras that have a, a plug-in jack for an external microphone that's very important. You'll want to get a shotgun mic and probably a wireless, um, like like we're using right now, that gets the microphone as close as possible to your subject, and you, that way you get less background noise. You want good lighting. Good lighting, too. Yeah. Uh, in our shop, we have tons of... of uh, oh, what they are is they're, they're grow lamps for baby chickens. There are these reflective, you know, you know what they are. And with uh, LED bulbs that are in a daylight color, so they're not real blue or, and they're not the, like uh, yellowish like a halogen would be. We like the daylight color best. And sometimes we put plastic um, diffusers. Yeah, we put diffusers. If, it, if it's going to be close to our faces and such, we'll put this, you know, it's just the, the, the diffuser panels in your overhead lighting. Um, we just get those from the hardware store and we cut them up and we put them up against our lights. That way it's not just a really harsh light on you. It's more soft. We're very low budget. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We we also start with a storyboard and um, with, with... Yeah. If you're going to do a video that, that people are going to want to watch, be honest with you you have to have a plan and you have to think it through before you even start um, what we do is we start with the concept you know what we want to do what we want to get across to people and then we start writing out a story a storyboard where we'll 
you know, write dialogue down. We'll have, uh, and that'll be in black usually. In red, we'll have the direction, you know, where the camera's going to be, what the camera's going to be focused on. If we walk in, uh, if there's going to be props or whatever. And then um, in blue, we'll have what we plan for post editing, like putting in graphics and text and uh, all that stuff. But yeah, you have to plan it out. Well, don't get me wrong. Sometimes we add lib and we're silly, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes that works out great. Sometimes it, it really is crappy, but sometimes, yeah, it's, in fact, we'll, when, when it comes down to doing it, we oftentimes forget our lines and uh, we do ad lib quite a bit. Uh, but it, but at least you, we have that direction we need to go in, in and we know what we have to, what information we have to say. So yeah, start out with, with a plan. We put probably more time and effort into the plan than we do the actual shooting. Definitely more than that. And one final thing, always edit. Always don't yeah. just put a... Um, yeah, you see it online and... You know, I don't want to, you know, say bad things about people, but, you know, you'll see a 20-minute video of a GoPro mounted on the front of a vehicle, unedited. I mean, be honest. How long do you watch a video like that before you click off of it? I'm about 20 seconds, 30 seconds, because I have a really short, a short attention span when it comes to that. So, yeah, um, clips, keep them, keep them down. 10 seconds, 15 seconds is a lifetime in video. Keep, keep your stuff short and to the point and uh, keep things moving. And with that, let's keep things moving. Okay. Jake. Wait, did I hit record? Yeah, I did. Okay. Never mind. Jake asks, have you ever considered a push-button start for your FJ? No, 